This morning we have a bunch of news for you guys coming from Nintendo because for some reason Nintendo decided to drop a ton of news in the middle of the night. We have news on a brand new Kirby game, Zelda concerts, a new Donkey Kong thing, the update for Splatoon 3's DLC, also a brand new Zelda, something to talk about here, coming from the music community. So we have a lot to go over. We're not going to waste any of your time. Let's go ahead and dive right in to our very first story, and this deals with Kirby. So HAL Laboratory is hiring for a new Kirby game. This is their post literally over on Twitter. It says, looking for Kirby development staff. Three weeks left until the deadline. Would you like to create the quote-unquote Kirby of the Stars series with us? We are looking for entries from enthusiastic and experienced game developers. They have a deadline to apply by February 13th, etc., 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 and a lot of their hiring posts are for 3D animators, 3D artists, and programmers. Now, this is obviously all fascinating news, and it just gets the speculation going on what this Kirby project is that they're hiring for. Is it another 3D Kirby game to go in line with the likes of Kirby in the Forgotten Land? Is it a completely different 3D Kirby game going in an all-new direction? Is it more side-scrolling Kirby just with 3D art assets? Look, we don't really know what it is. And then you're going to start to think, well, what are they going to do? Is mouthful mode coming back, which is really just like a new take on the copy abilities? What is going to happen? I don't know. So you guys can go ahead and speculate on all of this down in the comments below because we are going to get to another story. Now, this next story I find to be really interesting. If you guys remember, yesterday we talked about a possible Nintendo Direct leak over on 4chan. And look, as the day has gone on and we've you know had some time since it, it does sort of look like the 4chan stuff might not be real. Of course, it's not like we know because, again, uh, the Direct hasn't happened, right? But what I find interesting, of course is something that a known insider has said. In fact, we're talking about Necro Felipe, who is in our reliable category on our rumor believability scale. So we're going to call this a rumor, of course, because we can't verify any of it. But we're going to go over here to a post by Direct Feed Games, a.k.a. Nate the Hate, where he just brings up, you know, that I've been wondering if we had seen the Ninja or Cowgirl Peach costumes in prior trailers, because that was one of the evidence for the 4chan stuff, because you can see here, there is, you know, a symbol for the ninja here, a symbol for cowgirl. This is from my prior trailer. So, yeah, this doesn't necessarily mean that the stuff is fake. It just means that what people were acting like was proof, myself included, wasn't. But then we get down to Necro Felipe here, and he said that the reason that he thinks it's false is because the next Donkey Kong game will not be country. Let me repeat that again. He's saying it's false because the new DK game, the new Donkey Kong game, is not a country Donkey Kong game. Now, does that mean it's going to be a 3D Donkey Kong game? No, that doesn't guarantee that, and he's not saying that. But obviously, we associate a lot of side-scrolling Donkey Kong games with the country brand. They could obviously do one without the country brand, but it would be quite interesting to see if they decide to go back to the Donkey Kong 64 era, try to like do something new and fresh with that. It is something many of us want to see. We've been wanting to see Donkey Kong go back into 3D for some time. But again, that's not what this necessarily means, and it's just a rumor. It could still be a country game. It could also not be a country game. These are all rumors. Remember, rumors are meant to be doubted. But now we get to get into some actual news, and this really took, caught me off guard last night when we were live streaming because, hey, we're going to be live streaming something quite special coming up here in February on February 9th, bright and early at 7 a.m. What are we talking about? Well, Nintendo has announced that we should mark our calendars for this special Legend of Zelda Orchestra concert. Visit our official YouTube channel on February 9th to watch the full pre-recorded performance that's right we have a zelda orchestra concert but here's the thing that's not the only part of this story why because it's not the only thing getting a concert getting into this one splatoon slr stage management here the show must go on the splatoon 3 deep cut concert previously scheduled for nintendo live 2024 will be held on february 10th It'll be posted on Nintendo's official YouTube channel. 
So you can watch it at home, and there's no time for this. This isn't going to be like a live event sort of thing, uh, you know, whatever. It's just more and more concert goodness. Now, it's possible the Zelda stuff is also or was also going to be part of that Nintendo Live, and they're just deciding to do it this way. We don't really know. It's quite fascinating, and to me, I'm just excited for the Zelda one, especially since we know the exact time, and thus we can live stream react to the music. Oh, I can't wait, man. I love orchestrated music. And we have more news on orchestrated Zelda music coming up. But first, we got to dive into some game news because Nintendo surprised us all bright and early this morning at 7 a.m. Central Time with this tweet. SLR, big newsroom here with an exciting announcement. Side Order Wave 2 of the Splatoon 3 Expansion Pass paid DLC is coming at you on Thursday February 22nd, join up with new faces and old friends to escape the world of order. And we'll, we'll let you get a full screen of the trailer here while we continue to talk about Splatoon 3 side order. Look, very interesting is a lot of people thought this could be a Nintendo Direct announcement. Are they clearing out their announcement slate? Potentially because they might be revealing a certain something. I don't know. That is obviously up for debate. But it is fascinating that they are making the decisions they're presently making surrounding, well, Splatoon 3's DLC. It's just nice to have a date. Now you guys know. And we get to get into something quite cool. So we have some dear friends of the channel, people called Zelda Reorchestrated. You guys have heard their music if you've ever come to my live streams especially. And they had an announcement today. So they said, we are proud to announce our next big project, Scoring Sessions, a new series recorded with a live orchestra. You get to help decide which arrangements we do next. And you know what? Let's cue up their most recent one, play it in the background. It's glorious. Okay. So the series begins with an iconic piece from Twilight Symphony, arranged by Tim Stoney and orchestrated by Ari Barak Fisher. This new rendition is brought to life by an 80 piece orchestra and choir, featuring a captivating duo between Amy Turkharp and uh, Demontim on what's he doing? On piano. Hell yeah. Next up, we've always said our fans help make Zero what it is. From our founding to our current operations as Second Quest, now we're taking that statement to the next level by giving our fans the opportunity to vote on one of two proposed songs through donations on our website and purchases on Bandcamp. The first scoring session's arrangement to reach its target will be recorded next, while the other remains open for donations to ensure its eventual realization. Going forward, supporters will also vote on future pieces to be recorded, which each song having a set funding goal. To acknowledge the community's support, donors will receive a variety of awards celebrating their contribution to this groundbreaking series. Check out our site for more details. We're going to go to their site in a moment. Uh, but you see, with the launch of Scoring Sessions, we're also unveiling a new high dynamic range edition of music exclusive to Bandcamp in wave and flac formats. The HDR edition is dedicated to presenting audio in its purest unmodified forward all purchases of the hdr editions will go towards funding the next two arrangements in a 50 50 split minus fees huzzah and look that's pretty cool you guys might be wondering though what where, 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 where can we donate and what is next well that's where we need to go over to their actual website so we'll put a link to this down in the description for anyone that's actually interested in donating towards this project and helping fund the next one. As you can see, they have their, they're going over all the stuff you can get, and here is what you can vote on. So right now, their current efforts have Ballad of the Windfish. Oh, baby, baby, baby. I love Link's Awakening. Oh, I would love for that one to happen. Anyways, Ballad of the Windfish from Link's Awakening, and there's some details on it here. A brand new arrangement. And then Hyrule Field from Twilight Princess, another epic song from the Zelda series. And you can see that here are the donate now buttons. And with the goal of $3,000, whichever one hits that goal first is going to be the one they do first. And I presume they obviously need to hit these goals because, hey, you know, these are professional orchestras. They need to get me paid, right? It's not just free to make music at that thing. So there's a whole bunch of different levels with early access and acknowledgement and future voting rights. And, you know, you can buy it on Bandcamp as well. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here. We're going to link to this down below. If you guys are interested in supporting the project, Zero has created a lot of amazing music over the years. And I'm just really happy to show support. Uh, I'll probably be backing the uh, Link's Awakening one personally. 
well, with a little bit of money over the weekend because I just want that one to happen so bad. There you guys go. Five really big stories for you to kick off your day. Don't forget we have the Nintendo Prime Podcast tonight, an eight-person podcast. We're going to be doing a lot of crazy things, including debating whether Switch 2 is coming out in 2024 or 2025. Yes, we have people on both sides of the argument and so much more. It's going to be one hell of a show. Thank you guys for being here. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljans from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.